Good morning. Good morning, and welcome to First Lutheran Church in Paxton, Illinois. Our theme for this Sunday is peacemakers. Don't we need some peace nowadays? I think we do. And how to be a good peacemaker. From our second lesson that we will be reading today, Ephesians chapter 2, 1 through 10. God's grace and peace be with you to those who are in person here for worship, as well as those who are visiting us on our Facebook page for our virtual worship. God's grace and peace be with you once again. And I'm Pastor Deb Domeyer. We welcome you to First Lutheran Church here in Paxton, Illinois. We are located at 301 South College Street. And uh, we give God's blessing and and good wishes to those on their special day. We wish a happy birthday to Clarissa Gensler. We wish a happy birthday to Chase Elson. And blessings and a happy birthday to Denny Starkey. Remember that Redemption to Transformation, our Wednesday Lenten midweek service, is at noon. That is virtual and in person here in this worship space. Today we'd like to tell you a little bit about the matching funds of 2020. And there were many charities and donations that were received uh, from members of First Lutheran Church congregation for our 2020 matching fund drive. The total was $2,964 was donated and matched by funds from the ULIC Memorial Fund. So we'd like to thank everyone for donating to these charities. First Lutheran Church, Lutheran Social Service, Lutheran World Relief, American Cancer Society, Boys Town, Christ Lutheran High School, Crisis Nursery, Disabled American Veterans, Eastern Illinois Food Bank, Mammoth College, PBL Food Pantry, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, Salvation Army, DSC Tree of Hope, Gibson Area Hospital, PBL Education Foundation, Habitat for Humanity, Hands for Christ Food Pantry, and PBL FFA. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you for doing God's work uh, in this um, local area as well as in the nation and the world. Give yourselves a hand. Thank you. Great job. Great job. Thank you. And thank you to the ULIC uh, Fund for that incredible memorial. Remember the Panther Pantry? Donations like shampoo, conditioner, body soap, body wash, scrunchies, toothpaste, and toothbrushes. Also note that there are snacks and fellowship available in the worship area, social distancing measures. Uh, please apply for an enjoyable fellowship, and there's a sign-up sheet at the snack table. Remember that there are colored slips in your worship bulletin today. Please fill those out for attendance and drop them in the basket at the front door as you leave. And would you please rise and let us turn to our neighbors in an appropriate way. Let us share the peace of the Lord. Peace be with you all. We're so glad that you're here with us this morning and worshiping with us today. Thank you so much. Let us begin with confession and forgiveness. You'll find that in your Lutheran Book of Worship on page 56, as well as up here on the screen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of your hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, 
We confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority. I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to Jesus, verses 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6. In your Lutheran book of worship, 95. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. God of mercy, by your power to heal and to forgive, graciously cleanse us from all sin and make us strong. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the lessons. Thank you. Today's first lesson is from Numbers, chapter 21 
verses 4 through 9. That can be found on page 111 in your pew Bible. They traveled from Mount Hor along the route to the Red Sea to go around Edom. But the people grew impatient on the way. They spoke against God and against Moses and said, Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the desert? There is no bread, there is no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. They bit the people, and many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, Make a snake and put it up on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by the snake and looked at the bronze snake, he lived. We'll read Psalm 107 responsibly by the half verse. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim. He gathered them out of the lands. Some wandered in desert wastes. They were hungry and thirsty. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. He put their feet on a straight path. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy. For he satisfies the thirsty. The second lesson is from Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 through 10 and that's on page 827. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. This ends the lessons. Our Holy Gospel for this morning is from St. John, chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. You can find it in your pew Bible on page 752. Glory to you, O Christ. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, 
that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. Through him, whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whomever lives by the truth comes into the light, so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Good morning, boys and girls. It's so good to have you, those who are here in church, as well as those who are at home. I have here a beautiful quilt, and many of the ladies in our church build these quilts. And as you can see, there are many patches and colors. Anybody, what colors do you see? Grown-ups, you can answer too. What colors do you see? Griffin? What color? Blue, and there's red, and all different kinds of patches here, aren't there? And can, you, can everybody see that there are, some, there are some bold, solid colors, as well as some very pretty pastel? There's different patterns. There's flowers. There's little bears there. Over here, there's elephants. And you know what? Maybe even some of you in the congregation might recognize some of these patterns because maybe you donated some of this material to the women to to make these quilts. And so you might see a little bit of you in, in these quilts, right? And so... Our group is called Smokin' Fingers because their fingers are flying so fast and all this sewing that they're smoking. Their their fingers are smoking. They're moving so fast. And and who knows, uh, any boys and girls that are out there, maybe some adults, who knows where these quilts go? What do they do? Where do they go? What do you think, Griffin? Maybe to, to PBL? Maybe to maybe if somebody's house is on fire and they don't have a home and they need a blanket, we got blankets for them. Did you know they go to uh, all around the world? We send them all around the world, over close to India and all, all around the place. We, we actually have a missionary who personally takes some of these quilts to people who need them. Now, it takes... It takes a lot of skill to make these because you have to figure out they have to be a certain size. And if you get up close, you can see the stitching. And Pastor Deb has done some some of this too, not lately, but she has done some of it. It takes a lot of work to figure out how to um, sew all the pieces together. And then there's ties, and then you have to put the backing on and all kinds of things like that. So I've decided today that I'm going to make a quilt. And so I went out and I bought some some material, okay? So I'm going to ask you guys to help me make this quilt. Adults, I'm going to ask you to pitch in with the kids and help out with this. We're going to count to three, and then you're going to say, we're going to say one, two, three, okay? One, two, three with Pastor Deb. And then we're going to go bang, All right, and I'm going to toss these up in the air. All right, ready? And it's going to make a quilt. Okay, ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, well, that was a really silly idea, wasn't it? What what happened? How come it, it didn't come together like in a quilt? Because, what, what do you think? Right, and you know what you need? 
You need somebody who is a master planner. There, there is a master, there are master planners who make this quilt. And it takes a lot of master planning and skill to make this quilt. And just like it takes master planning to make this quilt, there is a master over you. And his name is Jesus Christ. And he has a plan for you, just like we had a plan for this quilt. And there is no mistake in it. It is real that God has done that for us and each and every one of us, that God has a plan for us. And our scripture for today is this. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. That is what the Bible says, that we are God's workmanship created by Jesus Christ to do good works. Let us pray. Dear Lord and Creator, you are the master designer, and we know that you have a plan for all our boys and girls and their moms and dads and all the people here. You have a plan and a purpose for us. We ask you to take the bits and pieces of our lives, just like the bits and pieces that Pastor Deb threw up in the air, to make them into something beautiful. Amen. Well, welcome once again to First Lutheran Church here in Paxton, Illinois. We are so happy to have you worshiping with us and to grow in spirit and grace. Every student at some point in time has learned about the 30-year war, a battle that consumed much of Central Europe from 1618 to 1648. The war ended with a peace of Westphalia Treaty, which was signed in 16. However, at the time, there was no representation from the Republic of Sant Marino, which is in Italy, and they did not attend the conference, the treaty conference. So officially, at the time, with that no representation, officially, only until a few years ago, the Republic of San Marino was at war with Sweden. Did you know that? They were at war with each other. And it, they were most bitter enemies. And finally, in 1996, as a symbolic gesture, a representative of San Marino signed a peace treaty. 300, 348 years after the war ended. Wow. There's a story right there that, that under the heading of better late than never, right? Can you imagine being at war, being at war for 348 years? No shots were fired by those three centuries. No hostages were taken. And yet officially, peace had not been made, right? Right? And, and if only every single war that we fought could be conducted in this way, wouldn't that be a miracle? Do you ever feel like the pieces are nowhere to be found? In this day and age, no corner of the globe has gone un, un, undiscovered, right? We, we have technology that, that communicates with almost every end of the planet, the world community is more than ever common. And yet we still find a reason to, what, kill each other. Is peace even possible in our modern world? Or should we abandon the idea completely? As a follower of the Prince of Peace, we have a responsibility to examine this question very closely. Hundreds of years before Jesus was born, the prophet Isaiah foretold 
a coming Messiah who would be wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9, uh, verse 6. Jesus' very birth was announced by angels singing, Peace on earth, right? And just before Jesus' death, he blessed his disciples with these words, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. John 14, 27. Jesus came and preached peace to you, that we were far away and peace to those who were near. How did Jesus preach peace to us today? How did he demonstrate peace in our lifestyle that we live today? How do we together follow this example? Jesus came to destroy barriers that separate people, a world in which religion often divides people. I, I saw that in Israel. People were divided. Jesus sought to bring people together. Just read your scripture. He welcomed children. Jesus welcomed children. Jesus ate with tax collectors and sinners. Jesus allowed a sinful woman to anoint his feet with oil. Jesus healed the lepers. In fact, the first time Jesus announced his true identity as Messiah, it was to a Samaritan woman with a bad reputation. John chapter 4. Righteous Jews of the day avoided Gentiles. In fact, the Jewish temple was designed to, to demonstrate that that Gentiles need to be kept at a distance from God. Gentiles were allowed to stand in, in the way outer court. This was like outside of the temple, far away from what was the holies of holies, the inner sanctum of God. This arrangement mirrored what was believed that the Gentiles were created solely to be fuel for the fires of hell. Prejudice is ugly part of human nature. We all want to feel better through someone else. We all have moments when we try to improve our self-image by projecting negative qualities onto other people. Many of us have heard, uh, um, you may have heard about this, there was a brown-eyed, blue-eyed experiment that took place. It was performed in third grade for a third grade teacher by a third grade teacher in 1968. Let me remind you of that painful study. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. had just been assassinated. A teacher named Jane Elliott wanted her students to feel the pain and discrimination and racism. So Elliot separated her students into two groups based on eye color. She announced that Friday that it would be Brown-Eyed Children Day, and all the brown-eyed children would be treated better than the blue-eyed children. And the brown-eyed students would be considered cleaner, smarter, more civilized than the blue-eyed students. And the result of this social experiment was shocking. Elliot reported that by midday, she could easily tell the difference between the brown-eyed students and the blue-eyed students from a distance. The brown-eyed students were happy and alert, while the blue-eyed students were absolutely miserable. On Monday, the roles were reversed. She reversed it. And so the blue-eyed children became the favored ones, and afterwards, the children reported their feelings. Many of them recalled feeling sad and angry and dirty on those days when they were not the favored ones, but they got the point. One student's mother reported that the family had been distressed over a mother-in-law's racist language. And after this experiment, their young daughter had insisted that their grandmother 
never use that word again. At a 1984 class reunion, the other students reported that the experiment had changed their life and their way of thinking. They were less likely to stereotype other people. Some former students even credited that this discrimination exercise inspired them to join the Peace Corps. Jesus also demonstrates a lifestyle that is devoted to peace. He is opposed to injustice and opposed to oppression. Jesus drove the money changers from the temple because they cheated people in the name of God. He told the story of a rich man who ended up in eternal torment. Meanwhile, poor Lazarus was so satisfied with his crumbs from the rich man's table, died and found himself in the place of honor next to Abraham. Jesus proclaimed the blessedness of the meek, the merciful, the peacemakers, and the persecuted. When John the Baptist asked if Jesus is the long-awaited deliverer, Jesus replied with these words, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind have received sight. The lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cured. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. And the good news is preached to the poor. Jesus came to free the people. Some of you may know the story of Tokio Hiko Kago. He was a Japanese Christian who inspired people around the world with his commitment to the least and the lowliest. At the age of 21, Kagawa took his, his friends by surprise when he immersed himself in depth in the Shinkawa slums in Japan. Now, this was before Japan became such a prosperous country. 10,000 people, 10,000 people crammed into houses six feet square, more like prison cells than a home. Their income averaged was 25 to 50 cents a day. The district swarmed with undernourished children, covered from head to toe with various kinds of skin disease. And once embedded in the slums, Kagawa's desire to give his life, not only to Jesus, but to the underprivileged, was taking root in his soul for some time, and it burst out in full purpose. Persecuted and threatened, He was unmoved. He feared neither man nor vermin, filth nor disease. The itch, the pest, tuberculosis, syphilis. He lived and slept, moved among all, and he made up his mind that his lifespan was short at best. And he faced it all without anxiety or fear. He glorified in the belief of Christianity that that we are sensible people who've gone mad with the love of God for humanity. What a great Christian. But here is what we need to know. Kagawa's radical commitment to the least and the lowliest was but a pale reflection to the Lord's love of all humanity and his love for you. Jesus broke down barriers that separate people. Jesus had that overwhelming, kind, and loving justice for you. Listen to the prophet Isaiah's word as he predicts the suffering servant who would restore the relationship with God. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his own words we are healed. Isaiah 53, verse 5. 
There was an American years ago visiting the city of Damascus. He went to the famous Market Street uh, marketplace on the street called The Straight. The marketplace was busy. There was lots of action going on, and there was a great crowd. And teams of merchants and shoppers and tourists were hustling and bustling in the shopping place, you know, way before COVID-19. And into that bustling place came a man riding slowly through the crowd on his bicycle, precariously balancing a basket of oranges on his handlebar. And he was bumped accidentally by a porter who was, who was bent over carrying a heavy, heavy burden on his back. And he didn't see the, the man on the bicycle. And so the burden dropped and oranges scattered everywhere. A bitter al- al- uh, fight broke out uh, between the cyclist and the porter. Angry words started to fly, threats and hostility, and they started to shout at each other. A crowd gathered to watch what was certainly going to be a really bloody fight. And the enraged cyclist moved towards the porter with a clenched fist. And just then, a tattered little man stepped out of the crowd and positioned himself between the adversaries. Then he did the most amazing thing. He caught the fist. He reached out and tenderly took the cyclist's fist in his hand, and then he kissed it. He kissed that fist. Murmurs started to go through the crowd swept over everyone. They, they laughed. They applauded. The antagonist relaxed, and they hugged each other. Everybody began to pick up those oranges. The little man began to drift away, and the American followed him and spoke to him. What a brave and beautiful thing you did. That was amazing. That, that was wonderful. Why, why did you do that? Why did you risk it? And the man answered, Because I'm a Christian. The Spirit of Christ was in me. He gave me the courage to be a peacemaker. He gave me the courage to do the right thing. Blessed are those peacemakers Blessed are those who destroy the barriers that separate people. And don't you think in this time, when we hear so much arguing and disagreeing on the internet, on TV, and so on, what a breath of fresh air this is. That that our Lord laid down his life to bring God's peace. Go in peace. May we be the peace of God that goes with you. May God give you the courage at all times to be a peacemaker. Amen. In the cross of Christ, I glory, Lutheran Book of Worship, 104.
Please rise, and together let us profess our faith in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Let us humbly beseech you, God, for his mercy upon the church, the world, and one another. Dear Father, we know the, word, the words by heart. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Kindle your spirit in us so that these words burn bright and pure within. Let them shine through our thoughts, our words, and our deeds. Lord, in your mercy. We ask for your blessing upon your people of this congregation. Center our hearts in love, shown for us in Christ Jesus, and help us to share that love with others. Lord, in your mercy. Teach the leaders of nations the ways of wisdom, integrity, humility. Keep them from being seduced by power and praise. Fill them with a hunger for justice and a love for mercy, and a desire to work for peace among all people. Lord, in your mercy. As the Israelites took upon the bronze serpent and were healed, grant that all who suffer may look upon the cross of Christ and find healing, comfort, forgiveness, hope, and life. Today we especially pray for Morgan Hansen, Julie Elliott, Joyce Carlson, Morgan Hansen, Reverend Ron Rasmus, Kevin Hansen, Ted Reynolds, Clarissa Gensler, Deb Lundquist. Lord, we pray for all military personnel. We pray for Heidi Brown, Ellen Lee, Doug McNaughton, Bruce Iverson, Corey McNaughton, Marsha Thompson, Cody Graham, John Foster, Lucille Simmons, Charlotte Hampton, Fred Mansky, Marge Sims, and Pastor Walter Schauberg. Restore them to our fellowship. Bestow upon us the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. For these things and for whatever else is needful, dear Father, we pray. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, one God, now and forever, Amen. And together let us pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. 
Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. With them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Rock of Ages, Cleft for Me, Lutheran Book of Worship, 327. 327. <laughs> May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.